Say, I'm glad you made it another year. Oh, that's something to praise God for. Because somebody didn't make it. Somebody didn't make it this year. And we thank God for another day that we can celebrate. Amen. Father, thank you today for your blessings. Thank you for your people who you love. You love everyone who's here today. You love the world. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world. But so the world through him might be saved. Open our eyes today. Let us see. Open our ears. Let us hear. Open up our minds, our hearts, our understanding so that we would be converted and you would be able to heal us. And we pray this, we ask this in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise God. In the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah the fourth and fifth verses, let us listen for a word from the Lord. Isaiah 53, the fourth and fifth verses. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. As you take your seat, I want you to say these words with me. Born, Born to, win. to win. Born, Born to, win. to win. Born to win. Born to win. You are supposed to be winning. But so many are losing. We're supposed to win. We're supposed to be able to live this life with victory, with power. We're supposed to be able to have peace instead of so much violence. We're supposed to be able to have love instead of hate. Peace instead of abuse. Power instead of oppression. We're supposed to be able to live our lives full of joy and blessings. Peace and power. We win because the battle has already been won. It's already been fought. Your battle, your, your struggle, that, that thing that, that, that you feel right now has just dogged you. Has continually came at you. Those things, those, those people. Oh, oh, I don't know what it is, but, but whatever battle you're fighting, it's already been won. That's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about today how Jesus already fought your battle. How Jesus already won the battle. The battle that you're fighting. The, the thing that you're struggling with. The, the hope that you want in your life. What you need. God's already got it. Oh bless his name. Bless his name. 
You were born to win. You're born to win. Jesus defeated the enemy and made the way for us to be winners too. This world is so violent. This world is so abusive, so oppressive, and utterly broken. We're supposed to have peace, not violence, love, not abuse, power, not oppression. There are two births, two births. The first birth is from Adam. Adam was created by God. In his image and after his likeness. The second birth is from God himself. Even though God created us in his image. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Or, and, and verse 26a. It says then God said let us make man in our image. According to our likeness. Even though God created us in his image, we lost that image when Adam sinned. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. It says this book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Created them. Male and female. And blessed them. And called them mankind. In the day they were created. Now watch this. Verse 3 it says. And Adam lived 130 years. And begot a son. And his own likeness. Adam who was created. In the likeness and image of God. When he had a son. His son was not created in the image and likeness of God. Because Adam had sinned. And so it says that Adam lived 130 years and begot or had a son. In what? His own image and likeness. And he named him Seth. Through Adam. We are born into sin. Through Jesus, we are born again. Oh, bless his name. Somebody got that. Somebody, somebody understood what happened. See, 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 you, whatever happened in your life, what, whatever conditions around your birth, all you have to be is born again. Psalm 51 and 5 says, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. So what happened is we were switched at birth. Switched at birth. You ever heard of anybody being switched at birth? The, the, the tragedy, the hurt and the heartache. Of a child, a baby being born and, 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 and not growing up with the child's own mother, own parents. Switched at birth. Living with the wrong identity. Living with the wrong understanding of, of, of who they are and whose their parents are, whose they are. Instead of the right identity. We were all in essence because of Adam's sin. Switched at birth. Yes, yes, yes. The second birth, the right birth, the new birth is from God. Yes. It is the birth that God created all humanity in from the very beginning. And Jesus came and suffered and died. Jesus shed his blood and broke his body so that we can all be returned back to the right birth from God. When we are born again, we are born to win. 
So we don't have to live with all this violence. We don't have to live with all this abuse. We don't have to live with all this oppression. There are two foundational things that you must have knowledge of in life. They really are the essence of life and everything in life. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of self are the two foundational knowledges we must have in life. All of the wisdom we need to live consists of the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. But only being born the second time can do it for us. The new birth can give you both the knowledge of God and the knowledge of yourself. The knowledge of God is difficult to comprehend and embrace. But the knowledge of ourselves is just as difficult to comprehend and embrace. In fact, the knowledge of ourselves is more difficult to comprehend and embrace. A true knowledge of ourselves requires a true knowledge of God. And we tend to think we know ourselves when in fact the only way we can truly know ourselves is with God's help through the second birth, through the new birth. A lot of people think they know themselves. They talking about their own truth. Knowing who I really am. But the truth is, you cannot truly know yourself until you know God. But the new birth, Jesus says this in John chapter 3 verse 7. You must be born again and then in John chapter 3 and verse 3 it says unless we are born again we cannot see the kingdom of God in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says and he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins and then let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. We're going to bring them together. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us. See, one of the truths that we've got to get a hold of is how much God loves us. The biggest lie ever told is God don't love us. The biggest way and the easiest way for the enemy to distract us and distort every else, everything else in our life is to make us believe that God is out to get us. God is angry and, and, and God is after us. But that's a lie. God loves you. And God will always love you. And there ain't nothing in the world that can happen to stop God from loving you. In fact, God loves you so much. God gave his son to die so that you would be able to win. God's great love, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, is rich. It's merciful. It says because of his great love, which he has loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. If you were born again, you were born to win. No matter how you were born, no matter when you were born, no matter where you were born, no matter the conditions around your birth, 
No matter the circumstances around your birth, you were born to win. We are initially born to lose, born into sin. We learn to become conditioned to violence. We learn to put up with and even participate in abuse and in oppression. But Jesus came to stop the violence. Jesus came to stop the abuse. Jesus came to stop oppression. So we don't have to suffer violence and abuse and oppression. You may have experienced in your own life violence. How many? All of us. I ask it, not because I don't know it. I just want to see if we're going to be truthful today. Before I keep going, because it's about to get good right here. But see, first you got to understand the condition you're in. Because that's what this thing is about today. See, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is right there, front and center, in all of our face. It was bloody, it, it was gory, it, 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 was, it was devastating. Jesus' body was ripped into shreds. His skin was torn from his body. His, his bones were, were stretched out of joint. And blood was everywhere. But, but we got to be willing to deal with the truth. Truth is, we need God. Truth is, we need a Savior. Truth is, there's so much violence in the world right now that we can't stop the violence no matter how we try. We are right on the brink of another world war, World War III. All it takes is one little thing or, or, or something to happen out of sorts. And we are on the brink of chaos and disaster in a world that's teetering and tottering on chaos and disaster. We are on the brink in our own families of abusive families. Come on, talk to me now. Abuse not out there. But in our own family, in our own homes, in our own relationships, in our own marriages. And what has happened is we become conditioned to it. We've gotten used to it. We, we've come to say, listen, I'm going to get me something too. Because i got to protect myself. And you do. Let, let me just keep it real. You, you do. When, when, when the police tell you, y'all need to get something. <laughs> had, had, had a police officer, I was talking to him. He said, you, 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 you got your stuff, you, you strapped. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all don't want to be real. Y'all came up in here to play today, but I'm trying to be real up in here today. Listen, listen, this is a violent day. This is a day of abuse and a day of misuse is a day of oppression. But Jesus came to, to stop all of that. So we don't have to put up with it. Look at somebody say, you don't have to put up with it. This thing going to change. Bless his name. It's got to get better. You don't have to experience violence. You don't have to experience abuse. You don't have to experience oppression. It doesn't have to keep affecting and infecting both your present and your future you may have made mistakes in your past but your mistakes don't have to keep affecting and infecting your present and your future you can go on to better and bigger and greater because God's got something for you you got to come to a place in your life where you say, I know this is not all God has for my life. I know God has bigger for my life. I know God has better for my life, better for my family, better for my neighborhood, better for my community, better for my nation and my world. I know God has better for me. Violence, abuse, and oppression is everywhere in our world. On Tuesday, a gunman opened fire in a Brooklyn subway. 
On Tuesday, a mall shooting in South Carolina wounded 10 people. A gang shooting in Sacramento, California killed six and wounded 12 more. Violence is everywhere. Murders and shootings and assaults. And all over the world, there's violence. When we hear all the news, when we see our loved ones struggle, when we experience violence, pain, and oppression, both at work and at home, in relationships and all around us. But I got news today. The battle is already won. And this is the reason that we celebrate Easter Resurrection Sunday. And we must celebrate it every day of our lives. Not just once a year, not just on Resurrection Easter Sunday, but every day of our lives, we must celebrate Easter Resurrection. Every time there's abuse, we must celebrate. Every time there's oppression, we must celebrate. Every time that the enemy and, 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 and oppression and, and abuse tries to raise its ugly head, and come at us in every direction. We must never ever forget that we win. We win, we win because Jesus won. Yes. And listen, we must, we must see Jesus' victory yes. as our victory. Yes. We must see his cross as the victory yes. that won our freedom. We must see the victory of Jesus. Jesus went through every battle that we go through. Every battle we go through, every battle we go through, Jesus has been through. And every battle we go through, Jesus is with us. How many know he's with you? How many can testify? He's always been with me. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm, a, I'm his own. And the only reason I'm here today is because he's been with me. The reason I've not lost my mind because he's been with me. The reason why my enemies couldn't stop me because Jesus is with me. When they thought they'd take me out, Jesus was with me. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. For the first time in his life, it looked like Jesus was going to lose. And Jesus had never lost a battle in his entire life. But now, it does not look good for Jesus. Now, it does not look like he's winning. He's been falsely accused. He's been stripped naked in public. Humiliated. Spit on, beaten, and lied on. I got two points today. The first point is we have power over grief yes. and sorrow yes. because of Jesus. Yes. We have power. Yes. Oh, bless his name. Oh, I wish we understood how much power we have. Isaiah 53 and 4. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Jesus grieves so we can have power. Jesus grieves so that we would be able to have power over our grief. There's been so much grief, so much death, so much loss. Grief hurts. Grief cuts you deep in your core. Grief is something that's, that's bitter and that's, that's, that's hardening. And, and, and grief is not the last and final say. Grief is not the power. It doesn't have the power over us. Jesus carried, it says, our sorrows. So that our sorrows will not stop us. There's a pe there are people who have been hurt so much. Who have experienced so much pain yes. until where it seems like they cannot keep going. Yes. It's got them down so much to where they can't find the strength to even have hope. Yes. 
so that our sorrows will not stop us. Jesus came. Yes. Listen, don't let what's happening to you right now stop you. Don't let what happened to you in your past stop you. Don't give up. Don't get so caught up in what it looks like now. The problem is that we think that we have to put up with all this stuff. The problem is we think we have to put up with abuse. The problem is that we think that we just got to deal with oppression. But Jesus told Pilate, no man take my life. But I lay it down. No man takes a life. But, but I, I lay my life down. To redeem. Jesus said I don't care. Who you are. I don't care if you are the Roman governor. No man is taking my life. I'm laying down my life. So I could redeem. I'm laying down my life. Listen redemption is powerful. That word redeem is a powerful word. Redeem means to purchase. Redeem means to buy back. Point number two, power over what sin causes. Power over what sin causes, what sin does. Isaiah 53 and, and 5, it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Sin has a cost. Sin, somebody said, costs you more than you want to pay. Yes. Romans 6 and 23, it says, for the wages of sin yes. is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Sin causes sickness. Sin causes death. Sin causes disease. Sin causes oppression and abuse. Yes. But Isaiah 53 says Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Jesus paid it all. So that we wouldn't have to lose. So we could win. His wounds heal us. Jesus heals us with every strike that was laid on his back. Every time the blood was shed, we're healed. Every time they cursed them out, we were healed. Every stripe they laid on them, we were healed. We are healed by the wounds in his side. We just need to believe that we are healed. Oh, I've seen God heal people. I've seen God heal cancer. I've seen God heal Sickness of the soul. I've seen God deliver young people and old people out of demon possession. All kinds of diseases. Jesus took the violence so that we wouldn't have to. Jesus became oppressed so that we wouldn't have to be oppressed. A lot of people out here living violated, living abused. And oppressed when Jesus said he was abused and oppressed so we wouldn't have to be that is what Isaiah is saying our text today verse 5 of Isaiah 53 he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. And that is what the cross is about. The cross is about our healing. The cross is about our deliverance. Songwriter said at the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart. Rolled away. It says at last. Did my savior bleed. And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. 
and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy all of the day. His body stained. Sweet Jesus died. And bathed in his own blood. We win. We win. Even when it looks like. We're not going to win. We win. Oh, glory, glory to God. You can't stop a winner. How many know I know what I'm talking about? You can't stop somebody who wins. As a song says, all I do is win. All I do is win, win. No matter what. Huh? Because you can't stop a winner. Because a winner has a mindset. A winner has an attitude. A winner has a belief system. We win no matter what it looks like. When Jesus dropped his head and he died, it looked as if death had won. But for the first time in the history of heaven, you heard an angel argue with God. God said to the angel of death, go get Jesus. He has drooped his head. He has said it is finished. He has said, Father, into thy hands, I commend, I commit my spirit. God said, go get him, death. Death said, wait a minute, God. He done already embarrassed me too many times already. Now you want me to go down there and get Jesus? God said, go get him, death. Death said, wait a minute, God. I don't mean to argue with you. But I remember one time I went and Jairus' daughter had taken her last breath. I had her in my cold, icy arms. And all of the funeral procession had begun to play the music. And Jesus came and raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He said, Jesus, I went to the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead for four days. And he started to stink. And I had Lazarus. I knew I had him. I knew he was dead. Because it was four long days. He said, but Jesus came and he stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and he waved his hand and he raised his voice and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. He said, and Lazarus was raised from the dead. Death said, God, now you want me to go down there? And get the man himself. God said yeah go get him. Because I got to show you something. I got to show you where the victory is. I got to show you where the power is. Because people had given up. Jairus had given up. Lazarus family had given up. Moses and his family and all of them are now standing at the gate. Oh, glory to God. All of the angels and all of the glorious celestial hosts are looking down at Jesus. God said, I got to show you something. Corinthians, the first, the 15th chapter and the 55th verse. It says, oh, death, where is your steam? Oh, grave, where is your victory? That Hades is hell. Where's the victory? He says, listen, Jesus left here and went down into hell. Anybody catching hell? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Anybody ever caught hell in your life? Anybody know what it's like to go through some hell? Jesus went to hell. That's what the Bible says. And in the midst of all of the hell, he took the keys. Uh -huh. He took the power. And it said, great, where's your victory? Death, where is your sting? Touch somebody, say, that's power. 
That's power. If you're born again, you're going to win. If you have been born again, you have power. Yeah. 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 You're going to win. I came here today to tell somebody, you're going to win. Oh, bless his name. I don't care what it looks like right now. You're going to win. I don't care what your marriage looks like. You're going to win. I don't care what your finances look like. You're going to win. I don't care how messed up the family is. Glory to God. You're going to win. Because we win. We win. Because I'm born again. Resurrection power is in me. Come on, stand at your feet. Stay there. I, I want you to repeat something after me because I, I want to get this in your spirit today as we leave this place. Say this with me. Because I'm born again, resurrection power is in me. Resurrection power is the power of resurrection. It is the power that got Jesus up from the grave. It is the power that took control over hell and death and destruction so that any situation we get into, we have power. So I want you to say it again because I'm born again. Resurrection power is in me. The same power that was in Jesus is in me because I'm born again. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is able to raise me from the dead. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is able to raise me from my dead situations, my dead circumstances, my dead relationship, my dead marriage, my dead family. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We have power. We have power. We have power over sickness. We have power over disease. We have power over lack. We have power over doubt. We have power over fear. As you bow your heads today, glory to God. I want to pray today first for those who are going through any situation whatever that situation is the blood of Jesus covers the blood of Jesus has won the victory I want you to take the power back today stop talking and thinking negative stop being bitter and hateful and walk in victory I want you to get in your mind whatever it is, whoever it is, that you want God to give you victory over. Many have been going through depression. Depression. That struggle on your job. That problem in your family. That issue in your marriage. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, today as we bow our heads, we raise our hands and hearts. God, our will goes up to you. Our will says, Father, it's not my will, but it's your will. Your will be done in my life. I want you to say that in your heart. Say, God, your will be done in my life. Right now, I'm in this situation. Right now, I'm dealing with this issue. I'm dealing with this problem. I'm in this circumstance. But God, your will be done. Because God, you didn't allow me to come in it for it to destroy me and kill me. You allowed me in it so the victory would come. So that I would see the power. And so the others will see the power. God, give me the strength. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to strengthen today. Strengthen your people. Strengthen the hearts of your people. Strengthen the minds, God. 
Strengthen, Lord, the body that feels weak. That feels like it can't go on. Touch the mind today in the name of Jesus. Deliver the mind, God, from the fear and the doubts and the tormenting words and things. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor. Come on, bless God. Put your hands together. Thank him today. Thank him today. Glory to God. I, I have a personal commitment, guy, that I want to give today for the next prayer. The next prayer is the prayer of salvation. It's the prayer so that you are born again. Oh, bless his name. See, I don't care whatever happened in your life, in your family, whatever happened to you, you can be born again. You can be born again. I want to give you this. You say, I'm, I'm going to pray this prayer of salvation. Just raise your hand. The ushers will give you, give you one. Raise your hand. If, say, say, I'm going to pray this prayer of salvation. This is for people that's going to pray this prayer with me, ushers. People that's going to pray this prayer. Amen. Because we, we, we got to help you get to that place of power in your life. Some of us been down so long, we, we don't know how to live any other way. So just keep your hand up. We'll get you one. I want you to pray the prayer of forgiveness, the prayer of faith. I want you to pray that prayer. Glory to God that gives you new life. Oh, bless his name. Born again. Able to win. No matter what happens. According to Romans 10 and 9. It says if you believe in your heart. And you confess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus Christ. That you will be forgiven. Come on, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus. I believe. I believe that you're the Christ. I believe that you are the son. Of the living God. You died. And you rose again. I confess you, Jesus, as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for being born again with power. I win now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory to God, glory to God. Look at somebody and say, you're looking at a winner.